and it's good to be back in the studio. All right, everyone. So it's a little dark behind me because one of my light batteries went kaput on the trip out in Chicago. So I've ordered a couple extra new ones uh, to replace that one. So anyway, that's why it's a little dark behind me. Just wanted to mention that. And as we get going here, yes, iteration. So for all the spelling bee folks out there, iteration is the key word because we've got a new iteration of the new balance beacon one of the hottest shoes of 2018 no doubt and let's dive in first of all to a few specs before giving my thoughts on how it performed on my first impression runs so i've actually done three runs in the shoe already i just got a little uh well i i ended up being stuck in chicago so i couldn't make this video yesterday so here we go all right let's dive in for that drop Oh yeah, six millimeter right where I like it. So 29 millimeter stack height in the heel, 23 in the forefoot for the weight. This is where the Beacon I think outshines so many other neutral road daily training shoes. Oh my goodness, here we go. So 6.8 or 6.7, 6.8 ounces in my size or 195 grams. That is incredible. In men's size nine, we're looking at 7.3 ounces or 206 grams. So once again, absolutely so lightweight. And I think that is why a lot of people tend to think that they could use this shoe for a tempo day or even a 5k 10k road race and i'm not going to argue too much against that i'll give some thoughts on how i will use the shoe moving forward but uh it is a very very lightweight neutral road running shoe and for that upper we're looking at an engineered mesh so it is different and i'm not going to try and turn this too much into a comparison video to the v1 but it is a new upper uh that's actually frankly the only difference between the v1 and the v2 is this upper and the biggest change as you can see is this collar here and it's a high collar okay so it comes up your ankle just a little bit more than most road daily training shoes and it has this pronounced very pronounced heel flare right above the heel counter to help with rubbing on the Achilles tendon and it's so pronounced I thought oh my goodness maybe I'm gonna feel this it's gonna feel a little too awkward on the run or I'm just not gonna like it but I didn't feel it at all in the first three runs in the v2 for the beacon and for that midsole on the v2 smooth operator it's exactly the same as the v1 midsole and it's actually i'll just dive into it right now it's the exact same outsole as well why fix it if it's not broken as the old adage goes and so again i was just reminded today so many times on the run why i love the shoe why it's i don't know how to describe how smooth it is through the gait cycle through the foot strike uh it just it's effortless and i'll also mention real quick it is one piece of foam so there's no that's probably why it is such a smooth operator to a certain extent uh there is just one foam like a lot of shoes uh mix foams different densities of foams throughout the midsole this is just one piece the entire way toe to heel and now on the outsole it's got that hard rubber in the higher uh impact areas in the heel and in the forefoot there you can see it uh that yellow there on the outsole and no you know I would say I took the Beacon ones to about a hundred and I think it was about 100, 120 miles, and I did start to see some wear and tear, actually more on the outside of my forefoot, uh, but nothing crazy. I guess if you wanted to get a shoe that you're gonna take to 400, 350, 400, 500 miles, this outsole, I'd be shocked if you could get really that much out of it. But uh, if you're planning on, let's say, the 250 to 350 range, I think you're gonna be just fine in this outsole. And for the fit, I went true to size and I'm glad that I did how so and that's from heel to toe however I have to mention that I'm swimming quite a bit in the toe box I don't know what's going on it feels like you can see it on your screen there that it, there's some extra material uh, through that toe box that simply could be reduced and now maybe if you have a, a forefoot that is uh, big and strong and muscular like and you need that extra space through the toe box then this might fit your foot perfect but for me I am swimming a little bit and I'll also mention that on sharp corners today I felt like my forefoot was sliding just a little teeny tiny bit off of the platform inside the shoe and so in a 5k or 10k road race 
with sharp corners. I don't know how I would feel about racing in this shoe. Uh, this would not be my first choice, first of all, but I uh, just keep that in mind if you're planning to, uh, to do a fast workout, even on a track, you know, the corners aren't that sharp, but you are still turning on a track. I'd think twice about taking this at high speeds on corners. And for comfort, very comfortable through the ride, through the gait cycle. Uh, I will just say, will say, little comparison, I'm not sure the upper is more comfortable than the V1. At this point, I'm not feeling like, oh my goodness, this is so much more comfortable than this straight up knit upper in the V1. And for a positive and a negative, the positive, again, smooth operator, no doubt, hands down, incredible. The drawback or the negative, it is that toe box. I'm swimming around. I'll probably have to put some Spenco inside just to help fill the inner cavity of the shoe, that inner volume, uh, because I'm just scrunching up a little too much through the toe box. So anyway, New Balance, if you're listening, if you're hearing other reports from other runners, maybe it's not just me that's feeling this uh, over... Uh, pronounced uh, upper material through that toe box. And how will I use that V2 moving forward? Most likely once again for my easy days. Although it has some pop and it's so lightweight, it is tempting. Okay, you could use this for a tempo day, absolutely. But I think I'm gonna stick most likely to that 7.30 to nine minute range for just easy kind of bopping along days anywhere from three miles on my really, really easy days up to, you know, six to eight miles. Uh, but I could see how you might want to take this up to higher speeds in a race or in a tempo day because it is, once again, so lightweight. And if you're looking for a shoe that can do training and racing, I would once, I would say, take a look at the Beacon V2. Now at $120, I'm thinking it's just a smidge too high mostly because the Hoka Rincon is coming in at $115. So it's really close New Balance, that's a, that's a, a good price. But I would say if you were at 115 or even 110, you would be beating the marketplace so much. I think more people would lean toward picking up the beacon if that price came down just a smidge. It's not bad, trust me. If it was 130, I'd say w not way too much, but too much. 120, not too shabby for the New Balance Beacon V2. And once again, keyword is iteration and that question of the day. I'm not gonna talk about the V2. I just wanna know, since this video is publishing at 5 p.m. Mountain Time, how was your run actually like today? Like literally today, since we're publishing this at the end of the day, how was your run today? What did you do? I hope you had a great day. Thanks for watching this second video publishing today. And we got a lot of good stuff coming down the pike in the next four to five days up in the mountains. Sig beauty, work hard, and love each other. Those are my thoughts on the Beacon V2. See you tomorrow.